Alright, let's I've got a block. Don't usually end up blocking, but they've done it feels like a strange opening actually. Do you, know, do you know what? I'm in E3. I don't do E3. That's a mouse slip. <laughs> just realised. Oh, crikey. I thought it looked different. Yeah, that's a mouse slip. Okay, I'm going to have to cancel this game. <laughs> right, well. This will um, put the... Selection to the test. Check on a piece. Nice position for us. So it's ended up being that Queen's opening thing or whatever it's called. So they're attacking X ray through. We could support the knight, but let's just take this pawn off the board. Checks captures, so it's up there, it's top of the list, supporting is bottom of the list, really, you know, so we did okay there. Um, attack, attack. Uh, let's just uh, yeah, threaten this bishop here. Put a check on it. And do, 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 do. let's attack this knight. Threaten the knight. It's top of the list. So in essence, we're giving the opponent things to think about which, as we know, does help with the tempo count and gaining advantages there. So they're doing the same thing now. They're giving us something to think about. I'm going to take the knight off the board. Simple capture. It's top of the list. And maybe not just yet. Is there a moment for some... Yeah, supporting. I think supporting at this moment in time is probably better for our position. This is going to be taking. That's going to be taking. Bishop's going to be taking, taking. So there might be a pawn up after all that. But positionally, I don't think we're going to be too bad. And we've seen quite a few games where... We have been a pawn down, but the opponent's position has not been very good because they've greedy munched and they've not they've not worked the pieces together type thing, you know, to help support the attack. So that's a bonus for us. But as you can see, the link between the choosing your candidate move movements to help you win those kind of important tempi or tempos. Kings, so you've done a mouse slip as well. Was he supposed to queenside castle? Maybe not. Okay, let's just take the pawn. Capture, so at the top of the list. Position looks not too bad because we've got an extra through to the king, so I believe the queen's going to take, bishop can take. Yep. Okay, so the bishop can take. Obviously, he can take this pawn here, but our king is defending. Oh, dear me, what's going on? What is going on? This is playing silly buggers now, isn't he? Castle? Okay, well, castle. He moves his king again, I'm just aborting the game. Oh, well, I'll have to resign, won't I? <laughs> Rooks on the attack, alright, so they've got a bit of focal point. There was a rationale for their move. I'm going to bring the bishop up to help support the rook attacking the rook. This knight should be probably taken. Oh, you know, I've looked. I'll have to let that pawn go because if he takes, if we take, yeah, he's taken. Then his bishop's going to be on our. Do, 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 do. I'm going to attack the rook. Continue as is. Improving the position. 
So like they've greedy munch, but they've not improved their position on the board. It's a key thing to really notice uh, in your in your games as you're developing. Well, it is for me anyway. When I've analysed my games, you know, quite a lot of my games in the past and even now, um, I sit back and I go, well, how did I lose that game? You know, the opponent was all over the place. They looked like they didn't even know how to play chess and yet they ended up winning. And it's these little things that creep in, the little tempo wins, you know, the way that they do the checks, the captures and frets and that type of stuff, you know, um, the position that they end up in or that I allow them to be in, you know. Um, it's not that they're doing anything special, it's just that I'm giving them the game. And that's in this essence what I'm trying to get put forward here in these recent recent games that we've been showing. Is that it's not about us doing anything special, it's about the opponent kind of gives you the game. I'm going to move the king across. I'm not going to lose any sleep over this situation now. So it's supporting the bishop. So it's being able to fluctuate between, you know, oh, I want to get a check on something. I need to get attacking something. And if you don't have anything clear, because if I take this, then I'm going to be disadvantaged because the bishop was just going to take the bishop for free. So now I can actually take the knight because the king is now here supporting the bishop. And we can now take the rook with a check on the king and we can take the bishop for free. So hopefully you saw how we, we, we explained it each step. That important tempi win based on the selection of candidate moves, if you like, or your calculation moves, you know. Um, I've only said candidate because that's the general theme of what people talk about, but your calculation, um, you've got to, for in your own right, you it can be as messy as possible, you know, you can be the scrappiest player ever. But if you're utilising those principles, even without knowing, then you're onto something because you're going to be upsetting quite a lot of people. Um, I'm going to bring the rook here now. I need to concentrate because I might end up messing this up. And just uh, bring this here. Maybe look to here, here. Yeah, let, let's get the bishop off the board then. It's got an x-ray through to the king. So the key build-up was those exchanges that were happening. So again, it does affect the move order of things as well. So you've got your candidate type calculations, positions, checks, captures, threats, support, blocking, position. And then that impacts on the tempi or the tempo or the rhythm of your movements um, at what step you are are you a step ahead of the opponent are you a step behind or two steps behind etc and then it's the move order of those um, selections as well that has to be done in the right manner so it's looking to do the rook thing Moving fast, we can go here, attacking the pawn. Yeah. It's got no protection on. Could still go up and then come back down again. King's got space. Let's take the pawn. So I probably mentioned before, as it gets closer towards the ending of the game, it is really crucial that your selection of moves, your candidate process is as tight as possible. Working your tempos and working your move orders in the right way, as best possible anyway. Just going to push here. 
Mr. Almedy. I pushed it there, you know, so just in case the king's thinking of escaping here. It kind of makes them go back a bit. If we go in there, we don't necessarily have to go there. Not really that happy with my bishop being here, because it doesn't really have much of a... I think it needs to sit here like this. So that's the pathway I'm looking to take, but I believe the rook is going to beat us to the punch. Obviously we're going to come back and defend, but he's not doing that. So is there some cleverness that he's doing? Let's just bring the bishop here, like we said, and just plan to go here. Simple is as simple does. It's just looking log logically at what is possible and what isn't possible. And when it gets more towards the end, it is looking at what is logical for the opponent and what isn't logical for the opponent. So I've got to think for the opponent. And as you've seen, Quite a lot of the times when I do my calculation, they don't do anything that I'm saying. Um, but it's fun when we try. So he's looking to exchange off the rook, isn't he? Let's just take the pawn. Or maybe not. Let's push past. Just get this bishop here, attacking the rook at the same time. So the rook is coming down for the king. As we said, it's looking at what the opponent can do. King can move. Before he even gets there. Because if we push here, we allow him to come down. King comes across. And then he's coming for this pawn here. Interesting times. We don't really want that happening, do we? No, we don't. Let's bring the king up. So end game practice is key if you're wanting to play a proper chess and you know get better. Um, it's really about let's just push this. It's really about understanding the end game as best possible and the rhythm of the the pieces. You might have more pieces on the ball, but seriously, there's been thousands, millions of games where even like this type of position with all these pieces on they've ended up being in a draw or they've even lost the position and lost the game so you really still have to be boxing clever when you're in these types of positions could come across and get this but maybe he's going to come here I'm quite liking maybe just putting a check here and then he's coming down for this pawn isn't it? well I'm taking this pawn first Does he bring his rook across? Put check on. Comes down. Oh, they've given up. They've given up. Boom, boom, boom. 